the NHRA Midwest Nationals in review right here on Monday Morning Racer, brought to you by strutmasters.com. That's next. <laughs> Wait, wait, right there. What was the NHRA Midwest Nationals? An incident altogether. I have never been to a crazier, more insane, wilder, baddiest drag race in my life. It was the wildest drag race that I have ever attended in person. Put any other descriptive, abnormal term in there you want. That was the NHRA Midwest Nationals. And it all began Saturday. It wasn't just Sunday. Saturday for the Nitro cars, it began early, but it went later on in the day than I think any of us ever expected. I counted at least four attempts to go into the staging lanes, but yet the cars were told to go back to the pits due to not a downpour, but rather just enough rain to cause drag trying and to cause people to scramble to keep the cars from getting wet. What do you do during that time? Well, if you're the Justin Ashley and Davis Motorsports gang, you get the pigskin out and you throw it around the pit area. They even got some fans involved. I got a couple of passes in myself putting down the camera. But when we finally did get on track for Q1, it was one of those qualifying sessions, whether it was Top Fuel or Funny Car, that you either hit it and blasted off a spectacular time like Tony Schumacher, And Tony Schumacher roars down the racetrack. The elapsed time, 368-0, 332.92 miles an hour. The first full top fuel run of the night is the fastest pass in the history of this racetrack. By two-tenths of a mile an hour, it is a new track record. Or you blasted off the tires and didn't get down the track at all, except for a coasting fashion.
for pro stock and pro stock motorcycle, it was deemed unsafe for them to run down the track. And there were some chirps that night of them calling Pro Stock and Pro Stock Motorcycle qualifying that, oh, the NHRA did this because if they get fuel in, that means they don't have to redeem a ticket, things of that nature. But the fact is, when you look in the context of what we're about to look at concerning Sunday, race day, that might have been the best decision the NHRA could have made that night with a cold track under the lights at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Then came Sunday, race day for the Midwest Nationals, and I want to describe it in this fashion. We are all familiar with the saying, what side of the bed, or did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed? And it seemed like that was this type of race day. Like, can we restart? sing the national anthem again, do the invocation again, and then race, and let's try it again. Wildest drag race that I have ever attended in my life. I don't even have a throttle whack top story. The whole event is the top story. It was wild for one day of drag racing at the NHRA Midwest Nationals. Let's begin with the first incident of the day. In pro stock, Kenny Delco lost it on the top end. It's today one of them. Anderson left, Delco right. That was my view of Kenny Delco's accident from mid-track. Kenny was all right, got out of the car under his own power. The car did barrel roll a couple of times after the footage in which I captured that you were able to just see. But I want you to notice also, later on in the round, there were other pro stock drivers, some that would have even won if they were able to stay in it, that they actually clutched the car, pulled the chutes due to the track being so slick on the top end. In fact, the NHRA was actually checking the track, it seemed like, after every other pair of cars going down the track, looking and seeing what they could find, what they could do to make the track safer for these low downforce cars that are pro stock currently. In fact, it got so bad that in the middle of round two, pro stock stopped. There was a discussion We've got to get off this track and not race. Pro Stock pulls out of the lane. Pro Mod pulls up. They decide to go out of the lanes as well. They postpone Factory Stock Showdown and the other low downforce cars, even after a top dragster accident, which was the first pair out, I believe, for their second round. The track was too cool. The crosswind was too dangerous. The traction compound wasn't allowing the cars to stick to the track. Monday morning racer here at the Midwest Nats. Later in the day, caught up with Kyle Caretzi once again. Kyle, in short, what in the world is going on out there? Uh, I think they're having maybe a little bit of issues with the track, but I think they made the best decision for us in the pro stock category and a couple other categories to kind of push it off to something else before anyone really gets hurt. Uh, you know, we lost first round. Uh, I felt that, you know, I, I pushed in the clutch I thought I should have. Um, so we'll, we'll live to the next weekend uh, down to Dallas. Yeah, I mean, I noticed it looked like you were ahead and you, on your way to a win, and it made a move, and you pulled the chutes to, to make sure, well, no one else did a Delco out here today. Yeah, I mean, that's very unfortunate. Thank God Kenny's okay uh, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I feel like I made the right decision uh, on that round as much as I hate to do that. Uh, we're here to win. Um, but yeah, we, I, I felt like I drove good, the car performed good down low, uh, and uh, yeah, I just had to push it in right after the eighth mile. As soon as I clicked it in high gear, got a little to the left, and you know, we'll, uh, we'll race another day. So, the only cars that were able to finish eliminations were, in fact, the fuel cars of Top Fuel and Funny Car, but they were not without incident that day, rather, they had some of the highest news of the day in incidents. Let's look at Leah Pruitt's mid-track launch right now. Signal to the driver. Leah racing for her points life. Tony just racing for fun. Enjoy. Body off, looking at the top 
went to the racetrack. That thing just disintegrated. Tony Schumacher got the win, but that was the craziest thing I've seen. It's like the whole front of the car just disintegrated down there. Leah's car has come to a stop, and she is already opening the capsule, and Leah Pruitt climbs out of what's left of that Don Schumacher. Man, it's so good to see Leah pop out of that canopy car and walk away from this accident. You can definitely tell that what has been implemented over the years concerning safety and drag racing worked in this very moment. Many years ago, we'd probably be hearing about broken ribs, broken ankle, broken wrist, being knocked unconscious, but none of that is the case for Leah Pruitt. She gets out of this car, walks away under her own power. Speculation on what happened. Maybe it was metal fatigue. Maybe it was a flawed design. Maybe it's something that is brand new that people are going to find and begin to reverse and implement for the future that it never happens again under those circumstances. Who knows? The fact is, when something goes wrong, there have been elements put in place to keep these drivers safe, and that occurred for Leah Pruitt. I'm sure, though, the Don Schumacher Racing Gang, they're going to be looking at this intently, and they're going to be coming up with ways to prevent such things in the future, or at least prolong such accidents for top fuel dragsters. It does seem, though, when you look into the history of the class, that we have entered a new era with a particular type of blowover scenario where these cars split in half. Hopefully, we don't see it again or anytime soon at least. The excitement was not only to Pro Stock and Top Fuel though. In Funny Car, Alexis DeJoria, she had one of the biggest explosions that I have seen in a long time. Something out of the 80s. I like to call these 80s explosions. That's what it reminds me of. I saw the body later on and it went from that full Toyota body to this small, small pile in the Dale Worsham pit. Sad thing to see. Nonetheless, what a stellar job by Alexis to hold on. She gets out of the car, she gets back in the car, runs the next round, and the rocket team came together, got that car back out there along with help from other crews to get Alexis DeJoria up there for the next round. It was a wonderful thing to see. Wow, what an explosion, though, for Alexis DeJoria. The next round we're talking about in top fuel back to it, though, you see that Tony Schumacher has a strange thing happen on the burnout. Does the burnout, the car does not go back to an idle. Supercharger eventually pops and he idles down. Gets a little bit of help to get off the track, but by that time they shut Doug off in the other lane, and there he is with a motor has got nitro in it. The crew's like, what do we do? We're going to refuel it. We're going to launch it off. What do we do? Well, they do just that, and he fires off to a 371, in fact, after all that. Amazing. Adjustment down. 
down there as they trim the fuel pump. Set the idle. Check the wheelie bar. All they got to do is run better than 3.94 seconds for lane choice. I don't think lane choice means anything, but I'd rather have it than not have it. Tony Schumacher wants him to run 370. 371, 321 miles an hour. And Tony Schumacher's down there going, congratulations guys, I was going to run 68. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the wildest day of drag racing I have ever personally witnessed. I think Alan Reinhardt got it right. This is one of those you need to keep your ticket to. You need to be able to say you were there and prove it because so many folks are going to be saying, I was there, whether they were there or not. This was the wildest day of drag racing that I have ever witnessed. And we're going to take the time now to switch to class in session and look at, well, just top fuel and funny car because Pro Stock, Pro Stock Motorcycle, Pro Mod, those classes were postponed and we're still waiting word on what in fact they're going to do. If it's going to be a full rerun of this event or they're going to pick back up where they left off. Pro Mod didn't even get to E1 at the Midwest Nationals. With Top Fuel, I want to make mention of Kyle Wurzel. Kyle Wurzel, many weeks ago, they had a serious bug, a bug that cost them a lot of money and hurt many parts there at Indianapolis, blowing a motor sky high from the launch. They stripped that car, they rewired that car, they qualified, they made the shows there at Indy afterwards, and he comes here to St. Louis and he makes the show and in round one clips off his best elapsed time ever against Steve Torrance in round one. Let's take a look at that right now. In top fuel, the final was Doug Coletta against Steve Torrance, and you've got a 20-point swing in this incident. Let's see who wins it. We may find out. If Steve Torrance has his way, we won't find out. Doug's ready, so Steve. Doug comes out on top, and he is now only away from Steve Torrance. Two points. Steve leads the points. It's Doug Coletta second. And then when we look at third, it's Leah Pruitt, 80 points behind after her incident there at mid-track in round two. Fourth is Billy Torrance, and then fifth is Terry McMillan. And in class... Concerning Terry McMillan, we got the news that they, along with Emily Oil, are parting ways. And it's not just his team. Emily Motor Oil is actually parting away from endeavors in motorsports at this time overall. Hopefully they'll be back. But Terry, one of the good guys out there in the pits, I hope definitely finds something for 2021. And he is out there continuing to drag race. In Funny Car, we continue to see the domination of Don Schumacher Racing, but the points battle does tighten between the top three drivers.
leading the points. It's Matt Hagen. Then second, we've got Jack Beckman, 16 behind. And Tommy Johnson Jr. is 34 points behind. Fourth, Ron Caps, 147 behind. Then Tim Wilkerson representing Ford and Mustang and a non-Don Schumacher racing car is 179 points behind in fifth place. Folks, again, a wild event for the NHRA Midwest Nationals. Cannot really give you a full report because the race has still got to be run for several other classes because of the dangerous conditions. I want to say this, though, and give you a few fan tips. If you plan on staying in downtown St. Louis because the track is not in St. Louis. It's right across the Mississippi River. In fact, you can see from the pit side grandstands the skyline of St. Louis with the famed arch. But if you stay downtown St. Louis, expect that to be rather expensive. For example, parking per day was $20 a day, even though it was connected to your motel, this case being the Marriott Grand. Nice motel, but $20 a day. There's great restaurants downtown that you can enjoy. There are things to do, obviously the arch itself, but it's going to be rather expensive. My recommendation is stay on the Illinois side and get your lodging there and do whatever little shopping you might need to do there on the Illinois side for you that are traveling in to witness drag racing there at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Another fan tip that I want to give to you, Kaleidoscope Coffee. Now, they're there at Worldwide Technology Raceway. They'll have a truck set up with their coffees. Good coffee. Matter of fact, I had a honey oat latte. Very fancy at the track, definitely for sure, but it was good. Sweet yet earthy, hot, definitely good for a cool day there at the track. You can get their brews online, check them out, get their brews. They're continuing to expand. They are doing a definite great job on their coffee. It's craft coffee at the track. It's pretty good, folks. Thank you for watching the Monday Morning Racer. This has been National Event in Review of the NHRA Midwest Nationals. Until next time, folks, like the video, subscribe to the channel, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.